For more on China's internet finance landscape, we welcome Charles Edouard Bouet. I hope I said that right, CEO of Roll On Burger Strategy Consultants. Welcome to the show. Um, look, this, this is a pretty big deal, not just in China, but around the world. But let me start specifically with China. The banks there, look, this is a big change, right? How are they going to make that transition? Yes, this is a really big change. I think that the same way we've seen uh, in other industry, like uh, with Uber or Airbnb or Booking.com, big transformation. Uh, the arrival of uh, non-financial players and internet player into the banking space uh, has been a big thing in China, and the banks have to uh, get moving. You say get moving. What do they have to do to get moving? Is it the banks that have to get moving? Is it the government that have to uh, speed up reforms to get moving? Yeah, or is it investors to get more educated for them to get moving? <laughs> I, I think, uh, and I have in my pocket something that everybody knows, which is a, a, a phone, and this has become the uh, remote control of uh, the life of everyone, and including the banking life. And I think the banks, uh, with traditional branches uh, and the old way of doing business, uh, have been overwhelmed by uh, what happened in the last uh, year or so. So they need to get uh, online, they need to understand the world is uh, moving to, uh, from B2C to C2B. Uh, and also the regulators have to evolve, and I think this is something that uh, is being discussed in countries like the U.S., Europe, but now China. The regulators are looking really uh, in depth in how to uh, look at this peer-to-peer -peer and uh, internet lending. The, the, the banks, I mean, I, I, I get the whole thing with the traditional part of it, but look, you're going to have to hire a lot of high-tech individuals. I mean, this is very different than traditional banking. Is there going to be the talent, the managers, and the infrastructure in place to handle what, what some are saying is going to be huge demand for this. Yeah, the demand is huge because uh, both on the, uh, the demand side, which is the people wanted to uh, deposit money, and on the lending side, uh, especially in China, the demand, demand is huge. Uh, the, the technological challenge for the bank, and uh, we're dealing with this every day, with our clients is uh, how you uh, move closer to the customers, are you able to transform your IT, which is uh, IT of the 90s and 2000, uh, very uh, cumbersome AV, uh, for good reason, because it's also to protect the consumer. So how you become more agile, how you hire, as you said, these uh, scarce resources who prefer to go to internet companies, startup, uh, and non-financial institutions yeah. than to work for traditional banks. I mean, so I the, the rest for talent is on in China. I know people who still get nervous about logging on to, to check their yes. bank account at a Starbucks or a public network. My point is, is that security is a huge issue, right? How can you assure customers and clients of these banks that they're going to have the same type of security on your phone versus online or walking into a branch? Security is the overarching challenge. You're right. From a technical point of view, from a regulatory point of view, from a protection of the consumer. The challenge we have is many people have uh, moved into a kind of a sharing economy, trust economy, and they trust, uh, for example, Alibaba with uh, Yubao and other accounts uh, because this is the way the new generation operates. So I think the, the challenge, as you said, is one is how you make sure the security is at the same level as when you go to a traditional bank account. At the same time, how you educate the new customers, uh, the new lenders, uh, that uh, they are, they're dealing with different animals than the traditional bank. And that's the, uh, the big gap uh, which has to be filled in. Quick question. The best thing about this that you see for, as a platform for, for clients and also perhaps the number one risk that you see that would be a huge warning sign if it doesn't get fixed? For the client, and uh, whether you are making deposit or lending, it's great. You can use uh, this remote control of your life, your phone, to operate this in a very seamless way, make payments, everything becomes easier. You don't have to have an appointment with the bank, you don't have to have a physical meetings. So for the consumers, it's great. Uh, the biggest risk, uh, and I think it's two risks. One, the first risk is, as you said, the security and regulation. What happens when things go wrong? Because so far, everything has been beautiful, uh, and uh, these money funds have been growing, these peer-to-peer -peer have been uh, growing, and uh, we haven't seen any big hiccup. And the second thing is, 
how you make sure that uh, this is balanced with the uh, traditional economy, uh, both the banking uh, and the capital market. Because you have uh, the emergence of a third economy, which is this, uh, let's say, C2B off online world, uh, which needs to be linked uh, from a regulatory point of view, but also from a, a business point of view. Otherwise, we will have some uh, gaps that cannot be filled in. All right, Charles, Edward, uh, Boue, uh, thank you very much for your insights on this um, pretty exciting topic.